Hi, welcome to Country Basket Weaving. I'm your hostess, Sandy Atkinson, and today we're going to be working on a basswood mold. This is a three by six inch mold that we're going to work on, and I've kind of brought in my studio from home to show you. I've brought in my workbench and a shave pony, which is this item here, and I brought in my shave horse. And I've also brought in some different size molds. The basswood molds come in many different sizes and many different styles. Like I said, we're going to be working on a 3 by 6 inch mold today. I've already pre-cut my, my um, black ash. This I bought prepared. It is prepared black ash. It's already satined on one side, which is the shiny side, and it's sanded on the other. Um, black ash, you do not soak any of the woods, whether it's white ash or oak or anything, you don't soak. You simply want to wet them down to make them a little more pliable. I've already laid out my pattern. Let me give that cut pattern to you real quick. I've cut three, um, these are quarter inches. I've cut three quarter inch pieces that are 12 inches long and seven quarter inch pieces that are 10 inches long. And I've already woven those in. I like to do my weaving on the bench and then take it to my mold when I get done. And this is a pretty simple layout. It's just an over under. I do have a center spoke here and three on each side. And I'm going to just clamp the uh, corners here to keep them together. And I just use these are little dowel close pins. They work really great for working on small baskets. I'm going to lay out the mold. I work with these push pins that have the felt on here, and the reason I like that felt is because it doesn't damage the wood. Come in here, and I'm going through, or I'm pushing into the mold. I am not going through any of my wood. I don't want to go through my weave or my spokes here, and I'm just going to push them in. I should show you what I'm working on here. Uh, it's just a ball and a stick, and I like this uh, form here because I can make it. Uh, different angles as I work, and that ball simply fits into the back of the mold. I push down these, and then I'm going to take off my pins now that I'm up here. Make sure everything's laid out straight. Do any straightening if I have to. Use as many of the push pins as you feel you need. And then you're going to simply bend this around and form it around the mold. You may need to wet a little bit as you work as it dries out, but just dampen it slightly. I'm using a length here for my weavers, and I'm simply going to wet that down again. You'll get a lot more than this in a package, but this is how it comes when it's prepared. I didn't have to go out and fell a tree and, and do all that, which makes it kind of nice if you don't have um, the knowledge or you don't have the uh, tools to do that. Come in here and form this down. I'm going to weave it in just a basic over and under weave. I'm actually back weaving here. You'll find I do that a lot to get started. I need to do some adjusting here. Push my push pins down a little bit tighter to hold everything in place. And I always start on top. And it's a basic weave that we've been weaving right along. I like this mold because it turns. Weave it next to the mold tightly because you want to take on the form of the mold. That's the idea of working with a mold. Come around your corner and pull everything tight. I think I need to come back here and push, put in a push pin to help hold this. And I'm not going through the wood. I'm simply going into the mold. I'm going to turn this and I'm just weaving it in an over under pattern following the form of the mold. Readjust things as you weave. That first row is the hardest one to get in because everything needs to be adjusted. Everything needs to be tightened. And just kind of play with it. Take your time. As I come back here, I'm going to overlap four just like I've always done. And I'm going to hide those ends and come in here and hide that end, the fourth one over. Weave it right on top of the piece we started with and then you can keep, um, keep going over four and then cut it. And I drop my piece down here. There we go. 
I need to re-wet it, re-dampen it. Now I started the first row over there, so do this, give it a turn, and you can start on the other side. I'm going to angle this down here. It's easier for me to work with down here. Make sure my satin side is out. Give myself a nice smooth end to start with. I'm always starting on top. Now as I see as I'm working this for you, I notice that it really needs to be tighter. So I really would probably go back and tighten that first row. It, it really does need to be tighter. Go ahead and work all the rows up to the top of the mold. There is an angle on the mold, so it's going to get wider at the top than it was at the bottom, which is good because that will make it much easier to come off the mold. Work that second row around. The felt came off. Pack everything in tight. It's best to do your packing and pack things in tight as you go along. But you get the general idea as you work on these molds to work right along. And you're going to overlap four and work that rows, work those rows all the way up to the top. You need about an inch and a half at the top to fold down. And I've done that on here. This one I've worked all the way to the top. I need to re-wet my top spokes here. If the weaver comes in front of the spoke, that spoke is going to get cut off even with the top of the basket. And you'll need a sharp pair of scissors to get in here. The weaver comes in front of, so that one gets cut off even with the top of the basket. Then these are going to be bent down, and I'm kind of wetting them here too. And they're going to get tucked on the inside. And if you need to, you need to come in here, and they only need to tuck down a couple. So if you come in there, just clip it off if it's a little bit too long. I'm just gently raising up those spokes so that will tuck down in there. To make this basket easier to get started and to learn how to work on this type of basket, for the rim I've simply used, let me get out another one here, I've simply used the same material. I've just used the uh, quarter inch in here. This is how the material will come. And I'm going to start the rim around here and just work it around just like we do our, our other rims on our other baskets. And overlap it an inch or so because this is a smaller basket. And then you're going to do the very same thing on the inside. That rim is coming. Make sure you have your satin side out. That's the, sunny, the shiny side. And work your rim around. Get it on there nice and tight. Now I've used 1164, so a real tiny, tiny narrow one, for my rim on this one. I'm cutting off. That's where I did my overlap there. And I'm using this small for the lashing. Um, I used even smaller on this one here. But this again is done just the way we've done other baskets. Make sure my shiny side is out. I start this one. Now there's two ways to start it. You can either start it simply by taking inside here and hiding the end underneath a couple of rows down into the basket and coming around, or you can do it the way we've done the other baskets and simply uh, come up and around the rim, the inside of the rim. But don't pull it hard if you're going to start it this way. Come in here. I don't have a good tail on this one, so I'm going to cut that off. And gently use a tool to come in between here and work this around. You can single lash or you can double lash this. It's kind of a personal preference. And I don't need to tug on it. Just gently um, give it a little bit of a pull, and then you're ready to go on to your next one. But you don't want to pull hard on it. Ash has a different feel than the reed does, which we usually work on. It's just a, a nice change. And I'm going to work this rim around. When I end the rim, 
putting the rim on. Um, oh, I was going to put a handle on this one. Let me show you that real quick. It's not too late. I wanted to show you the handles are made on it. The small handles, like the one I'm going to show you, was made on the shaved pony. And there's a little tool that was made by my friend Ron. And uh, to, to show you how these handles are made, this is a shaved pony here. And uh, this is a slab of, of the uh, ash. And it needs to soak. This is very dry. This needs to soak for a few days even. And then I make the strips out of here, um, however wide I want them, say a half an inch wide. And it fits underneath this uh, gadget here, tightens down. And then this you can bring down, and that will help you get this rounded edge that we have on the inside here. A lot of sanding, a lot of handwork takes a long time to make these handles. But they're also, you can buy them already prepared. Then to slide this in, um, I had to, we have what we call blanks. Here's some little tiny ones that he made also. And these are blanked in here. What we need to do is take, I have a whittler's knife, and come in here and, and put a stop cut, which is a cross cut like this, and whittle this down to make an open wedge on it. And that's what I've already done here is made an open wedge so that that will fit down into my basket. And I'm fitting it underneath, like you can see in here, I'm slide slides in very easy, sliding it right down between my weavers and my spoke until that notch fits right there and catches on the top of the notch the rim. And that's what holds that in. And then what I always like to do is put that X on the handle when I lash it. You remember how we do the X? That's important because that's going to hold that all in together. And I'll work that other piece in, that other side of the handle. Another little close pin up here. And maybe another one on this side. Okay, and that, I decided that it's a nice basket and it, it uh, handle looks real nice on it. Where this one, it still looks nice, but uh, just an addition to it. The Shave Pony is fun to work with, and it's probably one of the better things to start with when you get, if you want to get this involved in making your own handles and making your own, working on your molds and making your own baskets. Um, it's a good place to start. It's not very expensive. I need to re-wet this, and I'm going to I'm do just a few more here. Come around in here. I need to open it up. And again, I like to work ahead a little bit. Let me, these little tiny close pins are hard to grab onto. And come in here, and you don't have to pull real tight on this. It's not, um, it's not a real sturdy rim. This is not a real, this little basket is, is just a small miniature basket. Come in here. And on this basket, I think, I need to tighten it up here. I think I would just single lash this one. So I'm going to take a minute and get over to the handle and show you how to make that X on the handle. I would take a little more time and I would make sure that all of these crosses on the top of the reed are nice and even. Well, get that little piece in there. There we go. One more. Now, as I come by the handle, I want to lock that in. I'm going to single lash this handle. So I'm going to cross in front of it first, going from the back to the front. Then I'm going to come back and cross again. Boy, these aren't very tight. They really need, I need to spend some time on this. And it's getting dry. It needs to be re-wet again. Come in here and cross over from the front, going back into the back of the basket and making that X in there. And that holds that handle on. Come across here, all the way across from the back, and working, just continuing on here. Work that all the way around. And then to end it, 
you can simply weave it down into, like we began, weave it down into your, between your weavers and your spoke on the inside of the basket. Okay, I'd like to um, demonstrate working on the shave horse, so if you'll give me just a second, I'll be right over to my shave horse. I'll meet you there. Well, this is my shave horse, and it's what I use to make handles with. Um, to get an idea how the shave horse works, it has a foot pedal down here, and it moves this lever up here, and if I put my handle under here, it'll grab it, and the harder I push on the foot pedal, the more pressure I have up here to hold my handle in place so I can work on it. Uh, these are called blanks. This is reed, this is 18 millimeter reed, and it's what we're going to use today because it carves very easy and it, it makes it easy for me to show you how to work on a shave horse. These are birch blanks here, and they're, um, oh, they're probably about 15 inches long, and it makes a nice handle. A lot of carving on this. It's a little harder wood, so it's harder to work on. But uh, to get started, I'm going to use, like I said, I'm going to use the reed, 18 millimeter reed. And I cut these about 22 inches long, so, whoops, wrong side of my tape measure here. So I just take a pencil, oh, this one's 24, and I mark the center, and I mark three inches up from each end. And if I'm going to put a handle on here, a, a grab, then I'm going to uh, mark that out too. On this one, I've already marked it out. Here I've got three inches. And here's my half inch mark, and that's for my wedge that'll fit into the, the rim to hold the handle on. This is my carving area. And I decided to put a grip into here on this one. So I have a, just a two inch grip. This one I've already started whittling on or carving on. So I'm going to come to the other side. I wanted to show you this piece too because it has right here, it looks like a wormhole. And because it's a very natural growing um, product, you're going to get wormholes and different things into it. But that's all going to carve out, so that's not going to be in the way at all. Come in here and I'm going to push on my foot pedal and grab that down. This is a draw knife. It is an extremely sharp. Um, I do keep a blade protector on it. It's going to draw towards me. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to lock in my piece. Here's my pencil mark, so I'm going to start on my pencil mark. And I'm going to do what I call a stop cut. And it's simply pressing down. And I'm going to come over here to my half inch mark, my first mark, and put that stop cut in and press it down. You could do that with a knife too. I just go ahead and use my draw knife because it's convenient. I'm going to come back here. And I'm pushing on my foot because I don't want this to slip out and hit me in the belly. So I'm pushing on my foot pedal and I'm bringing this back. And this is something that you just need to practice. It takes nothing but practice to make handles. My stop hole, my stop cut needs to be a little bit deeper. And I'm going to try to round this off as, I, as I'm up here working. I'm going to round this off because I want that to be a smooth shape in there. That wormhole goes a little deeper, but you know, I really don't mind that. Things like that, the natural things that happen to wood, is kind of adds character to them. So I kind of like that little wormhole in there. I've carved a little bit deeper than half, than half the width of it. Put it back in, shorten it up here. Then I'm going to come down in here and put my cut. And I'm going to carve, I don't need a cut here because I'm going to go all the way off to the end. And this is the part that's going to go down into my basket, so I need it to be even narrower. By the way, I soaked these about two days ago. They need to soak a couple of days in order to make them real pliable to work. And the, the tougher the wood, the harder the wood you use, the longer you're going to have to let that soak. And while I'm working on handles, I keep the other blanks in a plastic bag wrapped in a wet towel. Now I'm coming to the back of the handle because I need to whittle off this in here. So I've started my whittling up here, kind of eyeball it where I'm going to start the whittling. Grab it with my foot pedal. 
and I'm whittling down the other side because I need that to fit down into the basket, so I need this to be narrow down in here. A little too narrow on the, right there, but that'll still work. Come to the other side. I haven't done it on the other side. Be careful when you're working with your draw knife because it is very sharp. And no, I don't worry about hitting my belly with the knife. Somehow I, you just know to stop it. That's a good, pretty good width right there. I like to sand my handles, so I would probably go back and sand this. Let's see if I have a good bend on this. Well, it could be just a little bit narrower. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to work it just a little more. Shave it down. Put another stop cut on it because that's where I want my cut to stop. And I need to do that to the other side. Until I can get a good bend on it. Let's see if I have a bend on it now. Now you just need to work it. And because of this uh, grip that I put in it, I'm going to actually have a square handle, not a round one. These here, this is a black ash handle that was made. I keep a string on them so they'll retain their shape, but that's a beautiful carved black ash handle. And here is birch, and I have a beech wood here too. I took the string off for to show you. Um, I also have a handle back here. This is one. Now these were made by another friend of mine, these um, pieces here, the molds. And I simply arched it around the mold, put it on after I made it, and when it was still damp, and let it dry for a couple of days on that mold. And then when you take it off the mold, then I would still put my string on it because I want to retain the shape that it has. But that one turned out pretty good. And this one was made out of the 18 millimeter uh, cane. Uh, reed, pardon me, the 18 millimeter reed. I still would need to sand this down because I want a nice handle. If I'm going to take all the time to work on it, I need to sand it down, spend some time on it, get some smooth edges, um, and then I would even put some handle oil on it. I, I like the basket handle oils. They're, um, they're really nice for the wood. So let me uh, go ahead and just practice a little bit because I still need practice. I have a lot to learn yet. This was my 24 inch one. Come in here and half a 24 would be my 12 inch center. Three inches for the lengths to go down into the basket. And then another half inch for my wedge. And then if I wanted to, this one I guess I won't put that hand, that grab on, that grip in the middle. Um, here I have, this is a whittler's knife and it, it really is nice for getting it down in here Oh, where's the one I worked on? And maybe smoothing out these edges, doing some hand whittling on it. These edges here sometimes will need smoothing out. Just be real careful. All these knives, these tools are very sharp, so be real careful with them. Okay, to come back here, I have to, um, I don't need a cut up here, but I do need a cut down here because I need to stop my cut. So I work that down. And because I'm not going to have a hand uh, grip in there, I can just start whittling this back. Oops, I didn't get enough cut on that one. That just means more sanding. I'm going to keep whittling. And then I need to whittle this end off over here too. It's going to take some time. I need to spend some time making this handle. And of course I need the practice too. I hope you've enjoyed working and, and seeing me today working on these different tools. These are not things that you need, just things I wanted to show you and, uh, and share with you. Next week we're going to go back to our same procedure and we're going to make this wall springtime, springtime wall basket. It has some tulips and some uh, little green leaves in it. It's kind of a cute basket fit into a kitchen or 
a family room really nice. And I've really enjoyed working with you today. I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a safe and happy week.